Welcome to the Project Management Prepcast, the key to PMP exam success. Here's your instructor, Cornelius Fichtner. Hello and welcome back to the Project Management Prepcast, where you can close any of those New Year's resolutions for the PMP exam that you may have set yourself. I'm your instructor, Cornelius Fichtner. In this lesson, we are going to close your project in the process that is aptly named close project or phase. All good things and even the not so good things must come to an end and that includes your project. Remember that all projects must have a start and an end. They must end. This process deals with closing of phases and of projects, which includes activities and steps that are performed during the close of a project or a phase, what occurs for project closure of a cancelled project, the purpose of the process, and of course some common steps involved with closing a project or a phase. And so for the last time here in the Project Integration Management Knowledge Area, let's take a look at the definition that we have for Project Integration Management, which includes the processes and activities that are needed to identify, define, combine, unify and coordinate the various processes and project management activities within the project management process groups. And even though this lesson focuses on closing, when we want to do a review of the integration management processes, we start at the very beginning of our project. We start with the develop project charter process, the process of developing a document that formally authorizes the existence of a project and provides the project manager with the authority to apply organizational resources to project activities. Once signed, our project now has a clearly defined start date. From here we move forward and we begin working on our plan. We develop the project management plan. This is the process of defining, preparing and coordinating all subsidiary plans and integrating them into a comprehensive project management plan. Once we have a plan and we know what we want to do, we're going to actually do it in the direct and manage project work process. The process of leading and performing the work defined in the project management plan and implementing approved changes to achieve the project's objectives. And as we are directing and managing our project work, there are always these stakeholders who ask us, well, how is the project doing? Are you on track? Um, can you send me a status report? This is what we're doing in monitor and control project work. The process of tracking, reviewing and reporting the progress to meet the performance objectives defined in the project management plan. And of course, change is inevitable. That's why we have the process of perform integrated change control. This is the process of reviewing all change requests, approving changes, managing changes to deliverables, organizational process assets, project documents and the overall project management plan, and then also communicating their disposition. And now we're coming towards the end of the project or the phase. So we have to close the project or the phase. This is the process of finalizing all activities across all of the project management process groups to formally complete the project or phase. And here you see our usual overview, the table that shows you into which process group the individual processes fall. And this one is so easy, I'm not even going to bother to ask you, do you know into which close projects or phase falls? Because it is definitely in the closing process group. But do you remember the other process that falls into the closing process group? There are only two processes in the whole BIMBOK guide that are in the closing process group. Remember it? It is the close procurements process. When it comes to the main concept of this process, I've already taken it a bit away in the introduction to this lesson. 
all projects and phases must come to an end. As part of the definition of a project, there must be a definite beginning. That's when we develop our project charter and an end. That's when we close the project or phase. Without closure, you do not have a project or a phase. There is a great deal that happens in the close project or phase process that many overlook. I mean, it sounds so simple, right? We're going to close the project. Sounds as if we simply stop working on the project and then we're done. Uh, correct? Well, that's not the case. Don't simply breeze over this process because you assume it's not of much importance. Bringing closure to a project or phase requires ensuring completion of all the project tasks. For example, you have to make sure that all the project objectives were met and that all work was delivered to expectations of the stakeholders, the scope statement, the quality plans, uh, and so on. And also bringing closure to a project or phase requires finalizing the project documentation, including any agreements, contracts, lessons learned, and other project artifacts. Let's take another look at the graphic that represents the typical ebbs and flows of activity intensities among the five process groups. You'll find a very similar graphic like this one in the Pinbok Guide, but this here shows you the five process groups in different colors. So here you see how the various process groups interact with each other when they ebb, when they flow. The closing process group, as you may expect, generally happens near the end of the project. It's the one there in light blue. Nonetheless, closing activities can begin quite early on in the project. Let's take a very silly example. Let's say you bring a contractor onto your project at the very start of your project and the only activity this contractor has to do is screw in the light bulb. Okay, so he comes with the light bulb, he screws in the light bulb, he finishes, sends you the invoice for screwing in the light bulb. Well, that particular procurement need is now closed and you can start the closing process for this procurement. So closing processes, they don't just happen at the end of your project, they can begin very early on. Or let us assume that you have a multi-year project to build a new cross-country gas pipeline. In phase one, the objective is to determine land availability, geographical needs and other preliminary work. A consultancy team is brought in for this phase of the project. Once the phase is complete and the objectives are met, the phase is closed, not the project only the phase. The activities of the closed project or phase process occur or have been occurring throughout phase one. If then there was a second phase, uh, uh, more closing activities will occur. Again, this closing is then more focused on the closing of the phase. Nonetheless, there could be work pertaining to closing the entire project during each phase closeout. So for later on, where we're really closing out the whole project. And then when the project is completed in its entirety at the end of phase three there, the closed project or phase procedures, they're going to be closing not just that particular phase, they will also close out the project as a whole. Let's take a look at a few example activities that we would do as we are closing a project or a phase. In essence, we perform all the activities necessary to administratively close the project or phase. That means we follow some sort of documented methodology that helps us to coordinate these activities. For instance, our internal policies require that we perform a peer review of all project documents. So this review has to be planned, performed and documented. We also need to ensure that the customer has formally accepted all of the deliverables. So we must ensure that the validate scope process has been properly conducted and that we have scope sign off. And then someone has to inform the customer and send a note letting him or her know that, hey, we are now officially closing this particular project. Our company may even have very specific requirements in regards to handing a project over to production. So we must plan and follow these transition criteria. 
and someone has to make sure that all our lessons learned files are updated. We have a certain responsibility for future projects to create lessons learned files because others can learn from our project. Even we can learn from our project. Taking the time to reflect may help us put things into perspective. If your project failed, then it's even more important that the lessons learned files are created. Just imagine, if you were given a new project and someone on your team then tells you, well, we tried this two years ago and the same project failed. But when you ask them, why did it fail? The answer is that they don't know and nobody really bothered to write down the problems and lessons learned and reasons why a very similar project failed two years ago. Well, good luck in this case trying to run the project successfully this time two years later. So help yourself and help others to avoid failing in the future. But this is also a great way to capture successes. What are things we want to do again? What worked so well? At Microsoft, they were building another data center, similar to one in Texas in another location. They flew everyone involved in the project to Redmond, Washington, to hold a two-day lessons learned debriefing. Sure, it costs tens of thousands of dollars to do this, but it saved millions on building of the next data center. In the end, anything and everything that your methodology requires you to do during the end of a project or phase is considered part of this process. Let me ask you this. When closing a project or phase, there are a lot of activities going on and you shouldn't forget any. What is the best way of ensuring that you don't forget any of these activities that you are supposed to be doing? Well, the answer is simple. You write them down. I usually tell my students to write them down as a checklist. One task after the other from the various processes that you cannot forget. Joe has to contact the customer about the project end. Susan will get in touch with the finance department and ensure that all invoices have been paid. Frank will do a final inspection of the design drawings and Barbara will write a final status report to see management. It's a checklist, probably a bit more elaborate than these examples here, but it's a checklist. You may also have heard a more elaborate name for this. It's also known as a step-by-step -step methodology. This step-by-step -step methodology, by the way, is really a result of this process. You can find it as part of the outputs under the general name of project or phase closure documents. There's also a lot to do if your project gets cancelled in regards to closing the project. For instance, your team must be reassigned to new projects. Stakeholders must be informed. Bills have to be paid and any open procurement agreements must be finalized or paid off. And also decisions will have to be made about your deliverables. Some of the deliverables may be partially or completely finished. Does the customer need them? Are we going to throw them away? Can we use them elsewhere on another project? So any other work or documentation that is completed as part of your project work has to be dealt with. It needs to be stored or distributed to those people who can use it. And the resources that are left over from the project, what is to happen to them? Well, let's say if you were building a house and then the financing fell through, what do you do with all that pile of bricks and the few that are already part of the house? Or what about your project budget? You may have some budget left over. Where's that money? going to go. So you see that there are good reasons why every project must go through the close project process, no matter what. We're moving on to the review of the inputs, tools, techniques and outputs and we take another look here at the overview from the PIMBOK guide. You can see there are not all that many three inputs, three tools and techniques and two outputs, but they're the big ones. Look there, the second input accepted deliverable. So basically all the deliverables from our project and then the outputs there, the final product, service or result transition. So this is the big one, handing it over to the customer. Let's look at the details.
So once again, we have three inputs here. We have the project management plan, we have the accepted deliverables, and we also have organizational process assets. In order to understand these inputs, the tools and techniques, and also the outputs, we'll look at them later. Let's again remember what we are doing in this process. We need to make sure that all of the work for which we have started this project has in fact been completed, and that we have met the project objectives or the phase objectives. For instance, we created a charter and we should ensure that we reached the goals defined in that charter. We created a scope statement and we should ensure that we have indeed delivered that scope. Of course, the project charter is not an input to our process here, but it was an input as we developed the project management plan, and that's what we're going to compare ourselves against here. After all, the project management plan, this is the agreement between the project manager and the sponsor on what is to be completed. To be able to close a project, we must think about what was planned to be done and what was actually done. What was done has to be reviewed and validated. The deliverable details are documented in the project management plan. The details around the acceptance criteria for deliverables and other project needs are also documented here. The plan often includes closing procedures and closing plans. Additionally, it may list out information or provide clarity on roles and responsibilities in regards to the closing needs of your project. Next, we have the accepted deliverables as inputs, and deliverables may include things like approved product specifications, delivery receipts of those deliverables, and work performance information. We use those that have been accepted in the validate scope process. Remember, we perform this closing process not only at the end of the project, but also at the end of a phase. Hey, it's called close project or phase, right? So we only use those deliverables that were accepted, finished, verified, and those that are contained in this particular phase of the project that we are closing out right now. And then we have the organizational process assets. You want your organizational process assets so that you don't forget to follow any of your internal rules and regulations in order to close a project, especially if there could be any legal ramifications, if any step or procedure were to be overlooked or documents got suddenly shredded when they shouldn't have been shredded. You should once again remember that these assets are really the collection of all of your company's procedures and policies maybe even ready-made step-by-step methodologies for closing your project. No need to reinvent the wheel if they already exist. So you see that once you understand the reasoning behind a process, it is much easier to then understand why you need all these inputs, tools and techniques and outputs. We are moving on to the tools and techniques and in this process we have expert judgment, analytical techniques, and meetings. So this would then be the moment when we take a look at our tools and techniques, right? Well, we're not going to do it though. Why? Because it's getting boring! You know these already! <sighs> that felt good. This is the last one of the integration processes, and in each one of these processes, we have pretty much seen the same tools and techniques again and again. Yes, I mean, of course, the expert judgment. There's no reason to review that yet one more time. I think you get the point and you know what expert judgment is. Another one that's practically been on every single process, meetings. If you don't know what a meeting is by now, you have not been in our profession long enough. And the third one, analytical techniques. We discussed that at great lengths in the monitor and control project work process. Instead, let's move on to the outputs. All right, the outputs then. Let's begin by reminding ourselves once again why we are doing this process. We need to make sure that all of the work for which we have started the project has in fact been completed and that we have met the project deliverables. That makes it quite clear that the first output is in fact the final product, service or result that our project produces. In fact, it's not the actual result itself. It's the transition from our project over 
into the production or handing it over to the customer. The other output is naturally any updates to the organizational process assets that may arise from this process here or simply updating of what has or has not occurred. The final product service or result transition as an output, fairly straightforward. We're not going to look in detail at that, but let's spend a few more seconds there on the organizational process assets updates because there could be many updates to the organizational process assets. For instance, updates to the project files. This is one of them that could happen or updates to the change management processes. In fact, any policies and procedures could be updated based on the lessons learned and the information that you have gathered on your project. In case of project cancellations, then you would also update the document that describes the reason behind the cancellation with lessons learned for the future. In fact, this list could include any and all of the organizational process assets that your project has used or touched. This is because every project is unique and at the end of each project you may have learned something new that warrants updating some of your company's assets. You should also include all documentation from the project or phase that shows project performance. As a project manager, you can now take a look at the original performance baseline and compare it against the actuals. This will show you variances and the overall project phase performance, and this can now be updated as well. At the opening of this lesson, we talked about a step-by-step -step methodology that should help us ensure that we are closing the project correctly. I'd like to take another look at this in order to give you an idea of what type of work is included. This methodology, of course, contains steps required to close the project from an administrative point of view. You define who is responsible for executing these steps. These people can be project team members, customers or other project stakeholders. Let me give you an idea of what high level steps you'd find in such an administrative procedure. You might want to review the project plan and make certain that all phases have been completed and accepted. You definitely have some steps that ensure that you receive proper approval from the customer or sponsor to close the current phase or to close out the complete project. If the opportunity exists, you might also conduct an independent audit for the project, either from an internal group like your PMO or a third party. You might have steps in which you collect your performance measurements. These can be used, for instance, to write a white paper for future marketing efforts or simply for a final status report. You describe how and when and with whom you hold lessons learned meetings. You probably also want to analyze and figure out if the project was a success or a failure. So you will have steps that describe how to do that. And don't forget that you should not only review the project work, but also the methodologies and processes that you have used. That means you will need to analyze how effective the project management processes were. Because if there were any issues with your project management methodology, it might be a very good idea to talk to your PMO and have them implement a change in the areas where you had difficulties. In every project, there's a ton of documentation that is created and some of your steps need to address how and when they get filed. And that concludes our review of the close project or phase process. And normally at this time, we would now do a review, give you a sample exam question and maybe close with an exam tip. Well, we're going to do this exactly the other way around this time. And you'll see in just a moment, because the tip I want to give you, this is another one of how to answer questions on your PMP exam. This one is my personal favorite because this is how I actually do it first. I read the question and I try to really understand the question, read the complete question, make sure that I understand it. And then without reading the answers, I think and I formulate the answer in my mind. Once I have the answer that I think should be the correct one, I read the answers that are actually given to me by that particular question and more often than not my answer is among the four that are available to me and now let's do just that together
let's apply this PMP exam tip to this sample question here. For your robot project, you hired a vendor for design. Your client required an intellectual property, that's an IP agreement, to ensure that you do not use previous designs. When the vendor delivers the design to you, you realize the design is the same as another used in the past. The vendor was not obliged to follow the IP requirement. Which of the following should you do before moving into the next project? phase. Okay, now formulate some probable answers in your mind. There are many possibilities, but just keep it sort of general. I'll give you about 10 seconds here to do this. So let's see if the answer that you have come up with, or at least something similar, is in the available answer choices. Here they are. A. Include the vendor in client meetings and make them realize the importance of maintaining the intellectual property. Answer B. Develop a contract addendum for the contract with the vendor and include the IP clause that you have already signed with your client. C. Ask the vendor to mix previous designs and some new ones so that the client does not find out. Or is it maybe D? None of the above. Well, take a moment, compare what you see here to the answer you had and then make your choice. The correct answer for this question is, of course, B. This is because updating the contract with your vendor will make sure that the vendor is governed by the legal contract that you have already signed with your customer as well. But I have two more notes about the answers that you see on the screen here. When you took a moment on the previous slide and to think about what answers you might give for this question here, you may not ne necessarily come up with A, B or C, because frankly, these answers then aren't all that great, but they are all possible answers. So here's the next PMP exam tip for you. On the PMP exam, sometimes your task is to find the best answer from among the ones you have. You may disagree with them, just as I disagree with B, because I think it's not a good answer to respond to the problem that we were given. But frankly, from among the ones that we have here on the screen, B is simply the best one. So that's the one to choose. And I have to put my ego and my opinion aside. And secondly, take a look at answer D none of the above. This answer is wrong on so many levels and the most important level is that the PMP exam does not use this style of an answer. There is no all of the above or none of the above on the PMP exam. Each answer stands on its own. It doesn't reference other answers. But we intentionally wanted to use this answer style here so that I can now tell you that you will not see none of the above or all of the above on the real PMP exam. Let's review. The closed project or phase process formally closes the project or in multi-phase projects it closes out a particular portion of the project as well as the activities of a given phase. It verifies that the project results have been appropriately accepted, all the work of the project has been completed and we have reached our objectives. We also don't want to forget to collect project records, analyze the project performance and archive all documentation. And with that, we have now come to the end of this lesson. So it's time for Justine to say, Godspeed. And of course, I say, until next time.